Welcome back to Skyrider Limited. I am Jesse, and I am standing on a beach, which means you know it's time for another kite bag tour. Today, I have a selection of stuff from what sort of serves as my bee bag, um, which is to say that it's some of the more interesting vintage stuff that I still like to fly from time to time. Uh, and a couple of them are actually fairly, fairly rare. So I wanted to share those with you today. And I think we will dive right in with something that is made up of a whole bunch of extinct colors. So as of the time of recording this, uh, I recently learned uh, that teal is now an extinct um, Icarix color. So with that in mind, there is only one color in this kite that is in production. Uh, so this is a Benson Outer Space, uh, not to be confused with the indoor kite, the inner space, or the later freestyle kite, the deep space. Uh, this kite features um, sky blue, teal, Caribbean, and gray. Uh, the only color that is still in production is the sky blue, and it's a very early outer space, uh, framed in all protruded. Um, it's a fun little kite. Um, it likes to kind of spin and it has a bit of oversteer and it just hangs in a fade for days um it's pretty precise too despite it's kind of want to oversteer you just have to be mindful of it but it'll fly a pretty pretty nice straight line um it's a lot of fun and so i dig it out periodically i got really lucky with this one um i found this uh an unflown one uh almost the exact same age um in uh, neon orange, gray, and black, uh, and a blue and neon orange, a uh, royal blue and neon orange inner space on eBay uh, as an estate sale. And uh, I picked them up for, for a, a real song. I got very lucky. I, uh, I threw an offer out uh, and, and really didn't expect it to get accepted. And then it was. And then I had kites, which is always a fun day. Um, it's... It's a fun kite. I, I admit I haven't quite completely got into terms with its game. Um, I've spent so much time recently with newer kites that going back to stuff without tail weights and I, I always have struggled a little with protruded frames. So it's a, it's interesting and it's a fun sort of like figure it out diversion to play with something, you know, bouncy and a little smaller and something you can kind of throw around but not throw around all at once uh so i like taking it out periodically just to as much challenge myself as anything uh so i think from here we're going to move to another vintage kite that is also the newest kite i have acquired so uh story time while i was on my road trip to kite party uh there was a matrix a flexi foil matrix on ebay uh, in the monochrome color, which I've said a couple of times is one of the other colorways I, I always wanted. It's the color I fell in love with the Matrix first in. Uh, it was for sale in the UK on eBay, and it was not set to ship to the US. I reached out to the seller uh, and basically said, hey, I'm interested, but you don't have it set to ship to the US. Can you either change it or... If it doesn't sell, can you relist it with shipping to the U.S. and I'll buy it? Well, he was very amenable to that, but don't you know it? Somebody snuck up and sniped me right out of that kite. But, uh, and, and first of all, huge shout out to Will Knight over in the U.K. who is uh, quite the finder of vintage kites and things. Uh, Will, thank you again. I know I've said it a couple of times in our messages, traffic and everything. Thank you again. The kite is gorgeous and I do absolutely love it. I flew it today and it flies amazing. Uh, so Will reaches out and says, really sorry that one sold. I have another one. I said, okay, cool. What you got? And what he had was this. Um, I had never actually seen one of these in person. Uh, the purple, um, the asymmetric purple, plum, grape, and purple. Um, and it's in really good shape. Um, so I've had it like a little over a week. Uh, first thing I did is I did with the rainbow kite that you guys have seen before. I changed it over to the three-point bridle. Um, the original turbo bridle is such an artifact of its time. 
it's uh, nearly as long as the kite is wide. Uh, it's very sluggish by comparison. This kite is so much more capable than that turbo bridle lets it be. Uh, this three-point bridle was sort of the preferred bridle of aircraft and Evolver, uh, some of the great British teams that flew the kite. Uh, and I I got some specs from uh, from a guy over in the UK who had one that Carl Robuchaw had tied. It was good, but not perfect. We then got our hands on another kite, and actually one of the uh, the ULSULs that Carl had built in the later run uh, when he took over doing them with his studio. Uh, and we found where the error in translation was, and I've since cleaned up the bridle both on the rainbow kite and with the help of Devin from Canvas, whose UL we measured, uh, and then this bridle that I tied. Uh, and uh, boy, it's good. Uh, the Matrix is the progenitor of so much of what we do now, and we don't even realize it. Um, uh, the kite flat spins and it flick flacks and it back spins and it Jacob flatters, and the dot Matrix, the baby one, just does them all more willingly because it's a smaller kite. But this thing, other than just a massive altitude drop when you make the transition from flare to fade, uh, is really remarkably good at doing doing the things uh and it's pretty um i had never been a big purple guy but this thing is just just gorgeous and it's gorgeous in the air uh i am now really hoping to at some point find the um the vented purple the matches this kite and the ul that's on my on my agenda of future vintage kites to acquire and Will might be out there looking for them for me right now. So, hey, if you have one of those, reach out to me. Or if you know Will Knight, send him a message and he'll connect the, he'll connect the dots because I want it. Uh, all right. Um, on to another kite and another European offering uh, and another really weird protruded one. Uh, so hang tight and we're going to change. All right. Uh, so... Many, many moons ago, uh, my dad and I, uh, as we were flying for a Via Sport uh, Composites, the, the um, carbon frame producer, uh, we got connected with and began flying for Level 1 out of Germany. Um, level 1, uh, the, the brothers, Jens and Olaf, uh, at the time, were producing a lot of really cool kites, and um, they built me, uh, me and us, a set of high levels. They were going to be my individual kites. Uh, as well as our team kites in asymmetric black and white. Uh, they uh, they developed a team kite. Uh, my dad and the team he was flying on that I had flown with a little bit uh, and Captain Eddie's Flying Circus all came together and developed a kite that would be the VMAX. Uh, but they sent us a lot of other really cool stuff just to sort of play with. Uh, they sent us Blackjacks and the Blackjack Celtic. Uh, and they sent us two of these. Uh, this is... Quite possibly one of the oddest looking sport kites I own. This is the Fly by Level 1. Uh, now, when I was little, I was kind of led to believe there was a Blackjack offshoot. But looking at it with the Blackjack, it is a pretty radically different shape. Super long tail, super cambered up, very tall, all protruded as is pretty common with Level 1 kites. Um, pivoting center T. Uh, interestingly, um, very, very 90s, the uh, the upper center, upper spreader center tee as well. Um, it's got a really interesting bridle. Um, it's got four legs. And I don't know if you can, I don't know how well that, that should show it to you a little bit better. It's got four legs, turbo leg. Uh, it's just, it's a wild little kite. And it, it, it's got a ton of oversteer and it's rolly and you can kind of cartwheel it. It, it doesn't quite. Um, so one of Devin from Canvas's favorite kites is the Sidewinder by Premier. Uh, it won't quite do the Sidewinder cheese wheel, the roll across the just just rolling across the field. But it comes pretty close. Big flat nose. Uh, and it's really cool iridescent fabric. Um, what's really weird about it, too, is. It's a double-sided sail, I think. Uh, I'm not really sure if the iridescence is printed on and the black is just the back, or if 
it's got two layers, but it even has an iridescent green uh, stitching in it. It's cool kite. It's from an era when people were trying stuff, and um, it's just fun without any real like purpose or aim at this point. It's just fun to put it on lines and just watch it roll its way around the sky, uh, which I think is as much fun as anything we do with a modern sport kite, for sure. So hang tight. We're going to get uh, another kite from a similar era. Oh, so bouncy, so bouncy. Uh, something a little bigger and a little less bouncy and pretty special because it is from a very early point in a company that left us last year. Uh, so hang tight and we're going to switch kites. So uh, last year, Ken McNeil uh, sort of retired from producing sport kites. Over the years, Ken has been uh, Airy Kite Works, Blue Moon Kites, and KMAC Fab. Um, the kite I have here is from the very beginning of Blue Moon Kites. This is Mojo number six. Um, this kite was ordered at the AKA convention at Muncie, Indiana in 1999 at the fly market when I'm going to say Ken probably didn't have much more than a couple of prototypes to show at the time. Uh, it's one of the first Blue Moon produced kites. It's a very nice uh, signature over to me. Um, my dad and I picked it up there. Uh, we picked the colors, um, being that it was 1999, we picked the colors on like an MS paint file that he had and literally just paint bucket tool, just red goes here, gray goes here, black goes here. Um, it's a cool kite. It's, uh, it's kind of, you know, flat and the tunnel is very wide by current standards, but it, it's got some very nice sort of of the era behaviors that make it quite a lot of fun. I will say at the time we got it, I found that it pulled a little too hard for, um, you know, 10 to 15 year old Jesse. But these days, uh, yeah, I handle it, you know, a lot better. And with the all of via frame, a little less bouncing than the protruded stuff, which suits my tendencies uh, a little better, I would say. Um, yeah. Um, Ken, uh, thank you for everything you've done just for sport kites over the years. Cheers on your sport kite retirement. We look forward to seeing uh, what new single line stuff you're going to produce for sure. Uh, I, I definitely wanted to take a minute to share this kite with people because it is from, you know, uh, a big sort of stepping point in, in Ken's contributions to sport kites for sure. Um, so that is my Blue Moon Mojo. Uh, all right, last kite coming up, and it's a uh, it's kind of rare one. Um, I would bet there's less than twenty of these that got made. So uh, hang tight, and let me go grab that. Go. So uh, last one. Um, the last time I was competing, which was about ten, almost eleven years ago now, uh, I was flying kites produced by. Uh, Sturdy Designs by Will Sturdy. Will was from Virginia. Um, he's now up in Maine. Um, he now uh, designs boats and sail plans and makes uh, Bibney covers and stuff like that. But uh, 12 years ago, he was making really cool sport kites. Um, so I competed with the Sabre series of kites that uh, he developed, the Sabre 2, the Light Sabre, the Heavy Sabre, which was the vented kite that I helped him develop. Um, before, right before he stopped, he started producing the Sabre 3, which I never had, and this kite. Um, this was a freestyle kite. Uh, Will had been working on a freestyle kite the entire time I knew him, about two and a half, three years uh, at the time. Um, I mean, I still know Will, but you know what I mean. Uh, at any rate, um, this kite morphed out of a project called the uh, the I Epe. The name's right here. The Epe. Um, the Epe, he must have built 20-something prototypes, maybe more, uh, and he was never happy with it. There were a couple of them that I really enjoyed, um, but Will was never satisfied. He was always looking for something more. Um, this is the kite that ultimately resulted. This is called an Impulse. Um, this is Will's freestyle kite. It has an incredibly skinny wingtip. It is fairly small with a pretty deep tunnel there. Of course, uh, as we've uh, come to learn in Jesse's favorite color of red, um, 
P200 frame with 5PT, um, black diamond, 5PT lower spreaders. Quick note, um, I see this thrown around a lot. Just so we're all on the same page here, uh, black diamond doesn't exist anymore. It was a clear coat process. It didn't really do anything except make the sticks slicker and a lot prettier. Um, nitros still exist, but black diamond nitros do not, for example. Um, there are uh, pretty much none left in the market. I went looking. Um, you, they don't exist. Uh, it made the stick about a gram, half a gram heavier. It really didn't change the flex characteristics too much. Uh, it was pretty but it didn't really do much in terms of performance. Um, so a couple of interesting things on the kite. Um, our sky center T and our, uh, our sky um, yo-yo stoppers, uh, all APA fittings. Um, it was a lot of fun, if a little vexing. Um, it is a kite kind of like the crux, but not as like, Sour Patch Kid, where the crux is like, stabs you in the back, but sweet, but stabs you in the back. This thing just kind of is like, false sense of security, death from above, no real middle ground. Um, every time I think I've got a handle on what this kite's doing and what it's about, stabs me. Mm -hmm. I want to love it. I want to love it so very much, and I keep trying to love it. It keeps stabbing me. I'm going to keep trying. It's like trying to hug a, a porcupine. It's cute. Hedgehogs are cute. They should be they should be huggable, but they are not. Uh so here we are. Uh, don't pet the black and white kitty, don't hug the hedgehog. None of those things will will end well for you. Uh but the impulse will one day. I'm sure of it. I will find I will find the uh the recipe and I will come to terms with the kite and it will be fun. I know it will. So, um, like I said, this one's pretty rare. Um, at some point, I will dig out the sabers and share those with you guys as we go through that vintage pack. Believe it or not, uh, I am one video away from showing you everything that is in my main bag at this point, which is why you're starting to see a few more of the vintage kites. Um, thank you so much for watching and subscribing and liking, and I hope you've been enjoying some of the other content, like the... Uh, kite maker corner videos uh and some of the flying videos and we'll see you next time see you out there skyrider <laughs>